The need for adaptation is counterintuitive because it's easy to associate resilience with the qualities within us that enable us to withstand stress without budging. The world around us is chaotic, but we stand our ground, strong as ever, right? Not exactly. It's not realistic to expect that our capacity to be resilient is defined by always staying the same when our lives are undergoing continuous changes every day. And so given that, we need to manage ourselves for flexibility rather than for maintaining stability. And that principle is the adaptation part of our model. Adaptation encompasses the decision-making processes and the set of actions we take to maintain our capacity to deal with current or future predicted change. It's the umbrella we take on days where rain is forecasted or the changes in the route we take to work when there are delays in our commute. In biology, adaptations are both learned and then inherited, representing the way an organism acts in order to survive or thrive in its environment, the physical changes that happen within an organism in reaction to its environment over time, and changes in the traits of a population as it responds generation after generation. Because adaptation involves change, it is a part of everything we do in the human world. Individuals, communities, and societies are constantly adjusting their activities, life courses, and even locations to take advantage of new opportunities. We often choose to adapt our lifestyles in positive ways to set ourselves up to thrive. Perhaps you move to a new location to begin your postdoc, for example. But adaptation isn't always voluntary. As we learned in prior sections of this module, sometimes there are things beyond our control that will change our lives in unexpected ways. In these moments, our adaptation becomes how we respond to those challenges. Adaptation can be represented by the relationship between the characteristics that make you resilient, the actions you take, and what happens as a result. These three components, which are described in the ecology literature as system characteristics, adaptation processes, and outcomes are represented here. Let's walk through each step. I like the term system characteristics when I think about the things that make us resilient because it tells us not just to look at ourselves and the qualities within us, but also everything in our world around us. In the adaptation piece of our model, the qualities that define our resilience are those that define our capacity to accept change and learn new things, and as well as how proactive we are at leveraging the environment around us. If I think about myself as a system, then I am taking into account who I am emotionally and physically, the people that I interact with regularly, my responsibilities at work and at home, the resources I have access to, and the communities I am a part of. Next are the actions we take in response to the stress we have experienced. There are two general approaches that we take to adapt reducing how vulnerable we are to the stress we face, or doing something that increases our capacity to deal with the stress. We might respond in the form of small actions, taking incremental steps, or perhaps what we are going through requires larger steps, more transformative change. These steps may be intentional, choosing to exercise as a form of stress relief, or changing your schedule to take care of a family member in need. But adaptation isn't always intentional taking an unplanned nap to compensate for working long hours for several nights in a row. If we don't give our system what it needs to respond to stress, biology may try to make some changes for us. For me, my recent stress has taken me a bit by surprise. So far in the module, we've talked about the stress associated with negative situations. But for me, my stress emerged after a really positive development, getting promoted. It was such a strange time because everything I had wanted and had been working toward at work had come true. Fancy new title, much bigger team, more responsibility. But all of that meant my work days also completely changed and became much more stressful. More responsibility and working with more people directly meant my days were more demanding, less time for me and less time for my own work. But my work was still there. My to-do list taking over multiple post-its on my computer throughout the day. I would stay up late at night catching up on work and then struggle to wake up in the morning. Or I would collapse on the couch at night and then ask myself in the morning if I could stay home and hide to get my own work done. Everything I'd wanted came true and I was absolutely drowning in it. I was really frustrated with myself too. Why couldn't I handle this transition better? Maybe I wasn't ready for all of this. Though I hope you don't, it's possible you may experience some of the same things when you take your first job after your postdoc. 
My adaptations to manage my career transition have been taking small incremental steps and they are starting to pay off. One simple switch has been reframing my own mindset. Often I start out thinking things like, I wish I had made more time for this, or this didn't get done, or this interaction didn't go well. And then it's no wonder I'm stressed. But when I flip the narrative, there's a lot to be grateful for and proud of in my days. I end thinking things like, I accomplished this today, or I really enjoyed the time I had with my twins. Right now I'm still in a phase where my mindset needs a deliberate intervention, but making small changes mentally is slowly changing the way I approach tasks or situations that are more difficult throughout the day. I am finding that I can mentally shift my perspective in real time because I practice doing so. And that mental shift that lies within my outcomes phase, or the phase where we have adapted in some way based on our stress response, and hopefully always for the better. Until the next change comes our way, of course, and then it will be time to figure out how to adapt all over again.